How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and in this video I have a treat for you. We're going to be shipping this Kirby Avalier vacuum cleaner. It is the 100th year anniversary edition. We paid $30 for it. We sold it for a little over $200. Now we're going to do the fun part which is disassembling it and shipping it and hopefully this video will be helpful or insightful to somebody out there that is trying to ship a similar vacuum cleaner or just any vacuum cleaner. Before we get into it, I do wanna point you to a playlist up there. I do have a handful of videos about shipping tips for small businesses with a variety of different items, different shipping techniques. And if you're new to shipping or to eBay or to e-commerce, different platforms, I highly recommend checking out that playlist to expose you to a bunch of different techniques. With that being said, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and let's get into the ship. First things first over here, we have the cord nicely corded up. We're gonna rotate this down and take it off. This little piece got jammed. I'm just gonna rotate it, get it out. And here we are with a handful of cord. There's one more part here on the vacuum. I'm just going to unhook it like that. And that leaves the cord attached to the head. And while we have it nice and bundled, I'm going to take a rubber band and put it like that to hold it together nicely. The next thing we're gonna do is disassemble the bag from the vacuum cleaner. There's a little clip up here that you're gonna press in. It's going to drop the top part of the bag. And then this part where the bag attaches to the head of the vacuum cleaner, you're gonna grab it, hopefully with two hands, and you're gonna rotate it counterclockwise, which is this direction. It should pop off just like that. There's little grooves in there that match up with these little pins on the head and that's what holds it into place. We're gonna put the bag to the side and now we're going to work on the handle of the upright vacuum. Kirby makes it really, really easy. You push this button right here and you lift up at the same time and it disassembles that entire upright assembly handle. Just doing that, we've decreased our shipping volume, but we're gonna break this down even more by going over here on the side. I just have a Phillips head screwdriver, stick it in, lefty loosey, also counterclockwise. The screw, there's a spring, and the cord holder should come off, and then you just pull these two assemblies apart and that breaks it down even farther. So we're gonna take that piece that just came off, we're going to put it back into the handle, take a rubber band, thread the rubber band through this part of the vacuum, and then go over the handle like that, and then take the other side of the rubber band and go over the cord holder like that. And that's gonna hold this in place and it shows the, the person that's receiving the vacuum where it goes. Now that the vacuum is disassembled, we're going to be packing and boxing it. I have this box that I found in the dumpster. It's an 18 and 5 eighths by 15 and 5 eighths by 24 and a fourth. And I have removed the bottom tape. And that's why this is ripped off like that. We're gonna create a new bottom with this stronger gum water fiberglass reinforced eBay tape. You may or may not have access to this. I got it from eBay's shipping supplies during one of the quarters. And I really like it for especially shipping heavy things. It creates a stronger bottom and a more professional look of the packing job. You could just use regular clear packing tape and run it along the bottom a couple times to reinforce it. But this stuff is really where it's at. I'm gonna measure the length of the box with the tape and then I'm gonna extend it a couple of inches for the sides, make a cut right there. And this is the part I'm doing it very primitively. I don't have a gum tape dispenser. They're, they're not very cheap. So I just, I run the tape under some water. It activates the glue on it and then I just shake off the water. And again, this is not the optimized way to do this. Then we line up the tape with the bottom. It bonds with the cardboard in a different way than normal tape does and almost becomes one with the cardboard. So I had removed all of the plastic tape on the bottom prior to this. 
so it can bond better to the cardboard. Now I'm gonna flip this box right side up and we're gonna start putting the vacuum inside of it. This is the part of the video where it gets controversial. People will wanna argue on the best way to do this, but this is just how I'm doing it. There's multiple ways to do it. There's better ways to do it. This is just how I'm doing it. I'm gonna create a crinkle wrap bottom with some of this builder's paper. And all that's really gonna do is fill some space between the vacuum head and the bottom. And we're gonna put the vacuum head in first because it's the heaviest. You could bubble wrap the vacuum head. This only sold for $200. It's not a huge sale if it, sold, if it was a vacuum that sold for four, five, six hundred $600, I probably would make it a little bit more presentable. I'm now going to fill around the vacuum head with more paper. You could use bubble wrap, you could use air pillows, you could use foam, so many different things. It's not a particularly fragile item, so as long as it doesn't shift around, it'll be fine. So we put paper all around the sides, over the vacuum. It's separating the vacuum head from the rest of the vacuum cleaner. Now I'm gonna put in the handle, just like that. We're going to throw in the vacuum bags on top of the handle, and that's going to separate it from the other side of the handle. I'm going to take the bag assembly, shove a paper towel in there, just because there is still some dust and dander that's coming out. And then we're just going to put that bag assembly in there. We're going to do one more layer of paper on the top. That brings us to this much empty space and we're going to cut the box down in order to save on shipping volume. Now when it comes to cutting down a box, there's multiple ways to do it. This is just one of them. You're gonna need a box cutter. You're gonna find the highest part of the product. Follow that point to the corner of the box, make an incision, and then cut all the way up like that. The box corner right here is cut. I'm gonna take my ruler I'm gonna measure how much of it is cut and it is about a 10 and a half inches. So I'm gonna go here to 10 and a half inches, make the same incision and cut up like that. Be careful with your box cutter and you probably shouldn't be cutting the box towards you. Uh, then we're gonna go to this corner, 10 and a half inches, make our incision and cut upwards. And we're gonna do the same thing right here, approximately 10 and a half inches and then cut up. So now you're gonna take your ruler, press it down all the way to the bottom of where you made your cut and then take your box cutter or you could take a pair of scissors or even a pen. You're gonna make a very, very light cut. You don't wanna go all the way through the box. You just wanna score it just a little bit. And we're gonna run it along Run it along that bottom of the ruler. It's just barely, barely cut. That's gonna be where we make our fold. Down like that. Now you're gonna do the same thing on the other three sides. On the last side, you might not even need the ruler. You could just take your object and run it across. the uh, bend line kind of like that and it should give you a nice bend down like that. Now we're going to take the box cutter again. We're going to cut off some excess cardboard, which is this flap, this flap, these flaps, and then this flap right here. So we cut down all four sides of the box and we trimmed the edges of two of the flaps. A lot of cardboard got trimmed off, but now it looks more like a normal box. And now we just gotta tape our top here, get our dimensions, weigh our package, and buy our shipping.
27 pounds, 11 ounces. So it's going to be rounded up to 28 pounds. We're going to buy our shipping off of a website called PirateShip.com. It gives you access to better UPS rates. Because if you go and stand in line at the UPS store, they're going to give you the worst possible rate. And you're going to have to wait in line. So it's like a lose-lose situation. It was about 19 by 17 by 14 rounded up. And we're going to hit get rates. It's going from Texas to Florida. So your mileage may vary depending on where you're shipping it. And we are not going to be shipping it priority mail. We're going to be shipping it UPS ground. And there you see it right there. 2344 is what it's going to cost us to ship this UPS ground. And if you don't have a fancy thermal printer, you can just print it out on regular paper and tape it onto your box. And then we're going to drop this off. And that is how you ship the vacuum cleaner. You could always reference your vacuum cleaner manual. If you have a different vacuum cleaner that you need to disassemble, just look at the assembly instructions and then do the reverse of that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already checked out the small business tips playlist, shipping playlist in the corner or in the description, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more projects. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.